everybody for joining us. Uh, Jeff and I are going to be talking about visitor management and how it goes mobile today and, and some of the solutions that uh, Engage by Cell helped Jeff and his team at Tenaris with. Uh, my name is Max Shelkoff, and I'm a senior mobile solutions consultant with Engage by Cell. And I'm joined with Jeff. Jeff, you want to introduce yourself, buddy? Yeah, I'm Jeff Lane. I work for Tenaris. And I'm the environmental manager covering the U.S. region. Perfect. Been doing that for about awesome. two years now. Two years? And how long have you been with the company? So I started at Tenaris about two and a half years ago. Was a HSE manager for two facilities. And then transitioned from that into the corporate team just recently. Perfect. Yeah, I was going to say, I knew your your job had tweaked to a, add a little bit more responsibility right. fairly recently. So, mm -hmm. all right. Next slide, pretty please, Anna. Awesome. Thank you. So quick little bit about Engage by Cell. We've been in business for 16 years, and I think we're actually over the 17-year mark now. Uh, but we specialize in all things related to mobile device-based technology. So providing solutions on how to make these that we all carry in our pockets at every second of every day and transforming them into powerful engagement tools. And specifically today, we're gonna to talk about how it's uh, become a part of the visitor safety check-in from a safety standpoint, but also kind of visitor experience and increasing efficiency and, and a lot of different things. But uh, next slide, I'll let Jeff give a brief little overview of his company or the company you work for and, and what they do. Right. All right. So Tenaris, we're a, a company that has facilities all around the world. And so we've broken up into regions. And so I'm in the U.S. region. And so we make steel pipes. So we take raw metal and make steel pipes. We do threading of those steel pipes and specialty accessories. And so... Uh, each of our facilities has a different role in that, and all of those facilities, what's going to connect with the topic today, has various truck drivers that come in. Those, those truck drivers aren't our employees. Those are third-party companies that are coming to our sites, and just as you can imagine, those pipes are big and heavy, and so we load them onto these big 18-wheelers, make sure that that's safely done, and then get them shipped out of our site moving on down the road to the next process. Perfect. And since we had that need, there was one of our sites in Houston, Texas, where we had our, our first kind of focal point on what to do to try to address the safety. And just to give you some numbers to think about, we had about maybe three to 400 drivers every week coming in that we needed to do some work to help with our safety for those truck drivers working in our facilities. Awesome. And I think that's a, a good point to bring up, Jeff. And, and obviously your use case is more specific because it is drivers, right? But this can be translated across any organization or any facility that has a lot of visitors, right? I mean, you have three, 400 different truck drivers. A college or university could have several hundred, if not thousands of people in and out. A uh, city obviously can have thousands of people come in and out. Uh, the applications are really across the board, even museums and, and different cultural centers or anything like that that have a lot of visitors are obviously all going to have unique challenges like Tenaris did, does with how do we get information to these people and how do we make it safer, how do we make it more efficient, etc. Uh, so that kind of transitions here into the next slide for us, pretty please, Anna, on the pain points, right? So there was a few different pain points that and I'm, I'm really excited about, I get to talk to you with it, Jeff, because you and I have been working on this for what, 12 months now, right? Yeah, a little more than a year, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and a part of that process has been identifying these pain points. And there's been obviously the, the really low hanging fruit ones that were really prevalent in the beginning. And then we kind of addressed additional ones as they kind of came about in this process. And we were able to build additional platforms to kind of uh, assist with them and, and transition the processes into different ways to make them more efficient. But the main pain points here, 
um, you know, visiting, right? So walk me through the process in the very beginning before we started this. We had drivers coming in. Were those drivers behaving all the time? What were some of those issues? Well, so having so many drivers from so many companies, call them visitors for a generic word, people come into our facility who didn't go through our training as our employees do. They didn't know all the rules and all the things that we knew were important. So over the years, as we've been in business for decades, uh, we knew that truck drivers, visitors come into our site with some kind of an issue and we'd try various ways to get the message across. There were flyers that were given out. There's signs, like that one McCarty site I mentioned has two signs that are 10 feet wide and 15 to 20 feet tall, right at the front gate that list all the safety requirements that we have for people when they come in our site. And even with that, there's still plenty of drivers every week who just can't or couldn't or wouldn't choose to follow those simple things. Like in an industrial facility, we want people to wear safety boots, safety glasses, and hard hats. Very simple things. You can pick them up at Walmart or Academy, that kind of thing. Yep. But these drivers coming in would say, no, I just don't have a hard hat. No, I just have my tennis shoes. And so it was just frustrating to try to figure out how to get that message out to the people. We we're right there in their face with this huge sign. They have to check in with a security person just to get in the gate because they have to hand off their paperwork anyway. So there was even a verbal communication like, do you have your safety gear? And they would say, oh, yeah, I've got my safety gear. And then we wouldn't find out till later till they're out in the middle of the facility already doing their work. And they didn't have anything. Uh, we also had other issues where we're just trying to make sure that the, the truck driver needed to get to the right spot. And so we had to spend time to actually take them to the place. So we can't drive their 18-wheeler right. and, and there's not painted lines on the ground that are just perfect for every single driver going to every single spot. So we had buggies with guys in there that would escort the trucks and, like I said, hundreds of trucks. So that means they were guys just dedicated really to driving buggies around. Not that much technical work by that person all day long, just driving buggies around. So just lots of things competing for time and resources. And so if there was a time that somebody got hurt, somebody wasn't wearing their hard hat, or maybe they were using their tools and they got hurt while they were out there, then we were stuck with the situation of the liability. Who's the person or company who's even responsible for that? Is it us because it happened on our site? Is it that driver because they chose or were complacent in, in being safe? Were they doing something much stupid greater, or yeah. did they get yep, caught yep. off guard or, or what? Yep. And so... Then... And that's a good point, I think, exactly, is eliminating some of that gray area is one of the main takeaways, right? So that kind of falls into the, the compliance bucket. And then I wanted to backtrack a second, because uh, I think one of the main things that we helped you and, and your team with was to easily update it as well. Because I keep, I, as we were preparing for this, and we were kind of coming up with the main points, I just... You talked about those big signs at your front gate, and I just, for whatever reason, it's stuck in my head just imagining you, because we've met in person out yeah. there with the paint bucket trying to update the sign, right? right. <laughs> and, that's, like, I yeah. think, <laughs> and that's exactly, you know, how do we, uh, a huge point was keeping all of this information readily updated in in the ease yeah. of updating all the policies because everything changes all the time you know new ppe comes out that's better or new safety standards the trucks change the process changes how do you keep all of those up to date all the time and uh, going back i just imagine the the paint bucket or you know jeff having to run around and print out 500 new flyers and all those things so i think those right. are the big pictures here is you know, the, the compliance and liability is, is better handled. The safety obviously is increased vastly by adhering and ensuring that that information is put in everybody's hands and you're, uh, have a, a readily 
uh, easy process to confirm that they viewed it, right? And then uh, overall efficiency. Those are the, the main big picture issues. Um, and so let's talk about the actual solutions a little bit. All right, so three exciting platforms. And, and like I mentioned, uh, Jeff and I worked on this for over 12 months now, and, and these platforms kind of came along during that process. We kind of addressed the main issue is, hey, we have all this liability, and it's hard to keep everybody updated on the safety standards. And how do we ensure that when these folks are coming into our facility, the drivers, the visitors, we just need to understand who they are, get that information in their hands and, and provide a, uh, a way to ensure that they comply with it, right? Or if acknowledge that information. So that's kind of the first little piece with the mobile check-in that uh, is on a mobile web app. And then the compliance portal was kind of the next step. So the compliance portal is essentially uh, a log or a history of those visitors and those drivers. And if there were events or infractions, you know, how do you keep track of that? How do you corrective behavior and all those different things, right? Um, and then the third little piece that we'll cover is Jeff's uh, project that he worked on much more than I did, but uh, the GPS mapping piece of it, which is really fascinating on how to provide uh, an efficient navigation uh, uh, system for those folks, rather than, as Jeff mentioned, uh, having golf carts or buggies drive around all day long, right? So we'll uh, go to the next slide and start diving in on some of these. So this is essentially, I kind of want to hear what the workflow for the mobile check-in is currently and what we built out and how it's working. But tell me just real quick kind of what the process was before this happened you know was it a paper trail was there even a process was it just the guard gate saying hey look at the sign you know and crossing fingers obviously it was more in depth than that but um tell me a little bit real quickly just what it was and then we can dive into what matters and what it is now you know yeah so it evolved over the years so there was a time when uh, at the site there was a piece of paper that was handed out and then we we gave that to the person and then we just hoped that they read it. We weren't really sure if they did. And then it evolved into a very big colorful sign, actually in English and in Spanish, posted at the, the front. And like I said, it's a really big sign. And so the, the, the driver would come up to the security guard window. And since they're doing deliveries, there's a very detailed process of signing in the, the equipment the products that they're bringing to our site or confirming the equipment or products that they're picking up from our site. So they might come in as a full truck or an empty truck. Mm -hmm. And so there's a very detailed process for that information because that's all about how much money we're making going in or going out. Ooh, but yep. at the same time, it was a very generic process about asking about the safety equipment. And that would even depend on the security guard or the, the person working that check-in desk and their personality yeah, or the, the, variables. the focus of the day even, what was on their mm -hmm. mind. If they were rushed or something, they may not ask the question, did you bring your safety gear? But yeah. it's not just about the safety gear. We also cared that their the truck vehicle was in good, good shape. Mm -hmm. But they weren't going to ask those questions every single time because there's a bunch of things that we wanted to know or to make sure that that truck driver was doing but it was just a very quick very visual maybe half second conversation about hey make sure you get all, you get all your stuff and make sure you're safe yep. and then the truck was in <laughs> right and now uh, and i'll kind of walk through we can visualize what it what it looks like so I'm the driver, I'm driving up and I have the QR code presented to where I can scan it, right? And I'm the driver, I take out my phone, I scan the QR code and there on the right side of the slide, you can kind of see what the first prompt will be. So just some easy, simple identifiers here. I put in my name, my information and, and who maybe I'm driving for, et cetera. And then I'm prompted to watch a quick little safety video. And 
I complete a quick, I think it's like 10 questions, something like that. Do I have my hard hat? Do I have my safety vest? Do I have my steel toe boots? Is my truck, you know, have the headache rack, et cetera? Kind of run through that quick assessment. Am I going to behave? Am I going to follow the rules? All those different things. And then uh, the first iteration that we came up with, uh, it was kind of uh, every single day. And we, we kind of developed that idea of the frequent flyer, right? So it was every single day I'd come up and do that. And then I'd, I'm going to give you credit uh, for the idea, Jeff, because, you know, at first we were like, oh, my goodness, we don't want to slow this process down. We want to make it better, right? right? So yeah. uh, Jeff had the idea to come up with uh, this kind of digital PAPS, if you will, right? So I take my little assessment, I get the A+, plus, and now there's a little digital pass that has a live screen that's a continuous little check mark that keeps moving around, and that's valid for one week. And, and the reason I bring that up is because we cut down that initial time. I mean, you probably know better than I do, but just the degree of efficiency, I mean, how much did it change after, you know, we added that little digital pass element? Yeah, so we we had first a video that was probably about four minutes long. And so we would ask them to, did you watch the video? And at that point we were saying, watch the video every time and take the 10 to 15 comment assessment. And so watching the video plus another two or so minutes thinking about and answering those questions, they could probably take five or six minutes and I don't know that necessarily all the people driving trucks are are even great at reading. So maybe it right. was even kind of kind of hard for them to think about it every single day. Um, so it was it was taking a while. And what we learned was at the gate, this safety check-in was slowing the trucks down. And so we said, okay, what do we can do to make it faster? So we decided to give it a one-week expiration so that they had to uh, come back in in a week, and then at that point, they would just watch the video, which we shortened over time and and made even a more efficient version of that. And then now they all have to do it once a week, which was just enough to keep it active in their mind, but not so much that every single day where it was so repetitive, maybe they yeah. weren't even thinking about it often enough. Yeah. And so if they came back in a week or if they came back in a month, their pass would expire. And they would just take it again at that point. So it really quickened up the reason the I, Yeah. And the reason I bring that up is because I think it's really important to hit home at how easily adaptive these platforms are, you know, because everything's changing. And, and I'm a big fan of rough draft. You know, even if you think you have a perfect product, it's easily to change to make it efficient. You know, you've added content, you've you've changed some of the questionnaires and yeah. things like yeah. that. And and what's that process look like? Is it I'm I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say that neither myself nor you are software engineers. So <laughs> no, so thankfully, <laughs> thankfully Max had a team, you know, a team of <laughs> engineers that we would always comment like, well, the engineers will build that. Mm -hmm. But the engineers that yeah, they didn't care or know yeah. what questions that I thought were important, what topics were important. So at first we said, okay, here's five or six things. If you could just build me a little question and answer form. But then once that was there, yeah, I had the admin privileges and I went in and I changed the questions, changed the statements, um, put in my own translation of how I wanted it to look when we had, when we added in the Spanish version. Yep. And so made it to where that I could even update the video whenever I wanted. So yeah, with that ability to just on the fly, really just make some changes. Like I, I wasn't making the rules. I'm just the guy who's making it visible. So I'd get an email from our supply chain director and say, Hey Jeff, we want to add in a, some comments about putting chalks under the wheels, or we want to highlight the no drug and alcohol use when the drivers are coming on site and that's okay, give me five minutes. Easy and peasy. then I made the change and it was live just immediately after that. Love it. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think we 
pretty thoroughly covered that aspect of it. Um, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide, pretty please, Anna. All right, perfect. So this piece was really uh, kind of developed out of necessity that we just continue to kind of learn with the process, right? So uh, the driver compliance feedback portal is essentially just the uh, making a record system, uh, a record keeping system that's easy to use, easy to track. So uh, really the tool provides uh, the ability to get rid of all that shuffle of paper, right? So if I'm the driver that's the frequent flyer coming into the McCarty plan all the time and you know, I might be forgetful that day and I forget my hard hat, right? And I come in and I say, hey, I have my hard hat. And you're like, great, Max, good seeing you today. And I go and park my truck and I get out and you say, hey, Max, where's your hard hat? And I'm like, oh man, I don't have it. Well, technically I've kind of fibbed my way in, right? So how yeah. do you keep track of all the fibs that Max is telling you every other day, right? And how do you hold Max accountable? And better yet, how do you hold Max's employer accountable if necessary. If it's a habitual issue and, you know, if they're, let's say, a vendor that has quite a few trucks coming in and out of your facility, quite a few drivers, and and there's been uh, a lot of issues with a specific company or something, that kind of situation, how were you attempting to hold those folks accountable before we started to provide this digitized records, you know? Was there a process that you could use before this that, and how yeah. did ours make it more efficient, you know? So first, just think of this as I was at the McCarty facility working on the safety of that one place. And so I was working on this project because I knew I had problems at my facility, but we have 15 facilities in the United States. So I was keeping track of some issues. Our supply chain people, they knew the troublesome drivers who came to our site. Or our security person at the front gate, they recognized the one from last time who had a problem. And, and the, the minimal stuff is probably pretty easy to forget, like the person who doesn't come with their safety gear. But there's some stuff that was a really big deal. Like if the guy's truck is actually in unsafe condition, and the time before we were going to tell him, hey, don't come back unless you fix this because that burns time and they're in the way and, and their truck is, is now on our site again. So we, we would lose track. We didn't have that tracking that great at our facility except by our Which memory. Which is easy to do when you have three, four hundred drivers a week. I yeah. see, you know, that's that's an easy thing to have. Right. <laughs> and then then it grows beyond that because. The driver who might come to my site in Houston was next going to go down to um, Bay City, or next he was going to drive up to Pennsylvania. Okay, well, I don't know how much experience you have with truck drivers, Max, but some of them aren't real pleasant, and some of them have <laughs> short tempers. I can imagine. So, yeah. Okay, so there, there literally were fist fights that mm -hmm. some drivers had, and there were some drivers that fought between each other. And then some that were disrespectful to our employees. Right. And so at my site, it was really easy to say, okay, this guy can't ever come back. Yep. But there wasn't a way. Well, there was only one tiny way. I'll, I'll tell you about that. But there wasn't a way really to let our other facilities know that driver X has been yep. told they can't come back because of, of this issue. The right. only time that would happen is if someone was actually injured and then we would have to go through an investigation of what happened Injury and what about report. this. Yeah, yeah, and it yeah. would go up the chain and then it would finally get back to our contracts department. The contracts department would then be told that this, this broker has a driver and they're unsafe. And then it would finally get back to the company. So it was a really long, difficult chain of data sharing, really to make a point back to the, the person who might call that truck driver again. Yeah. And in this... This platform, this dashboard that we we've built with you, um, you know, it's really simplistic in the idea. So going back to the the little uh, safety check in. So the first point of the process where I take that little assessment, one of the identifiers that is requested is the person's phone number, because each person obviously has a unique phone number that identifies them, their mobile phone. Yeah. And so kind of the process looks like you have a, a dashboard at the 
security uh, gate check in and th that individual can type in that person's phone number really quickly and up pops this driver compliance uh, portal and kind of the workflow of it. Um, if there is an incident or whatever uh, note needs to be taken, uh, that person can easily add a note, hey, Max forgot his hard hat. And then the next time, hey, Max got out of his truck and got in an altercation with another driver. And so there's kind of three different categories that uh, you established of yeah. where they're at in their compliance, right? So we have uh, good. So Max is a frequent flyer, never has any problems. Warning, Max has forgotten his hard hat habitually. You know, Max had his truck wasn't up to standards, you know, and then blocked, which would obviously probably fall under your category of, you know, so a serious incident has happened, right? I've I've gotten right. in an altercation. I've been not so pleasant to your staff, et cetera, things like that. So it's a really slick tool to not only digitize all these and share that information like you described, but having some good indicators that you can assign to, you know, these visitors, these frequent flyer visitors uh, of, you know, kind of what to expect or it's transparency on where that person's at with their history too. at a glance, which is really convenient. Yep. We um, even made it to where yeah, the, the badge scan, whenever they were in the blocked category, we made it to where it didn't show on that digital pass. Um, come on in. It said, yep. go check with security. It absolute. didn't say you can't come in. It didn't say any abs thing absolute, but it right. would not allow security to let them in mm -hmm. unless we had a conversation. And then we'd learn, okay, we got to look you up. Okay, here's yeah. the story. Here's why you can't come in. Yep. So made it really transparent. Transparency is key. It, 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 I, I love that. So I think that's a, a good little place to transition here. Yep. So the the fun and exciting one, this is you know, a little more interactive. Uh, but for those of you that are in the audience here, if you want to scan this QR code, um, and I'll do it with you real quick, but if you scan that QR code, up will pop the map that Jeff and my team built out for the McCarty location, and it will prompt you to share your location. You can go ahead and it'll prompt you to turn your audio on and lock browser window and if you hit continue the map will come up here and there's a couple different features here with the gps mapping um, that definitely need to be highlighted but before we get to that the the process and the main pain point i suppose that this helped you solve right so when we were in the beginning talking about efficiency the process was golf carts, right? I mean, right. <laughs> there was not, yeah. So in, in, in McCarty is a large location. It's, you know, I've, I've been there in person and you can spend a long time walking around that place. Right. So, yeah. um, you're literally driving through it in your trucks and there's different yards that are identified of where a driver might have to go. But the process before was I pull up and I've never been there and I don't know where the green yard is. I would have to talk to the security gate and then I would go into a parking lot and wait my turn, right? And then someone in a, a golf cart or whatever it might be comes up and says, hey, follow me to the green yard, right? right. So obviously that process is uh, one way of doing it, but it would be much more efficient to have that uh, capability in the person's hands, right? To try <laughs> to mm -hmm. decipher where to go and... Um, the unique piece I think it's important to understand, and this is something that that you and Anna and my uh, other members, of my team really worked on is, you know, the roads inside of your facility don't necessarily exist on other GPS mapping platforms, right? So right. you pull up to the McCarty plant and it's not like you can just punch into uh, Google Maps or whatever it might be and say, I need to go to Green Yard, right? So it's, it's really starting from scratch and developing these uh, pathways and these roads on how to navigate your facility. And it's very custom in that sense, right? Um, and you included even a, an additional feature that I really think is awesome. And you worked with geofencing. And how did you apply the geofencing as far as using verbal commands and things like that? You want to talk? about that for a second yeah so we we wanted to make it to where that 
the driver knew that there was going to be a stop sign and knew where they needed to turn. And we, since we didn't have that wonderful Siri voice or the, the Google voice that was just automatically populated with every turn possible, what we did was uh, we, we co collected the GPS points for where a truck would either stop or turn and then put in the geofencing. And I think we probably did like with a 50 foot or a 75 foot radius. So whenever the truck was on that path, and they were getting close to a stop sign, it would just give a simple message, approaching a stop, approaching a stop. Or if there was a turn coming up, it would it would say, um, I can't remember the right wording, but approaching a turn. But that meant that they didn't have to look at their phone every single intersection they came up to, to know where they were going. They were able to just use the, the verbal cues and drive safely without staring at their phone, which was an issue that we didn't like. You can see the note at the bottom that says, uh, don't look at your phone while you're driving. Because we want them looking at the road. still want to be safe. <laughs> yeah, still be safe. So with that, that made it possible for us to identify the path. And then we pre-populated each one of those GPS points in the system and I, I, again, in my admin account, I could go and I could move those around and I could add the little symbols on there and I could I'd put more in there. And so adjust it as needed. Although I didn't have to build it from scratch. Right, Max, right. You, you had another one of those mysterious <laughs> engineers in the background who put yep. all that together for me. Of course, yeah. And, and I think it's, it's a very applicable solution to facilities that obviously want to direct traffic or highlight different spaces, right? So in your use case, obviously the parking lot is very important. The different yards are very important. And in other facilities, it can be as simple as identifying major points of interest, right? So this is right. translatable to many different industries and, and even just highlighting facilities, you know, where's your restrooms at? Where's, where do I check in at the office? Things like that are very easily uh, passed over in large facilities like this. And when you can provide a very simple solution that's ultra customizable, I think that really delivers the, the ticket item to make it a much more pleasant uh, end user experience when visiting a facility, right? And um, also one thing that happened was this was, I guess, the second or third thing that we came up with, but it was interesting that this was something that one of our directors got most excited about. And he said, <laughs> oh, well, this I asked for this for the drivers, but now what about when a maintenance crew shows up? I could give them this and we could say, here's this building one, building two. Or what if we have a visitor and they have to park here, but I want them to come to the main office, which is down this sidewalk in this other place. And I said, well, yeah, we can do that. All you got to do is give them the QR code or send them this little short URL and it's on their phone. Easy peasy. Super Absolutely. easy. Yep. So yep. That's, that's just the next step. Great. Well, we'll go to the next slide here, Anna. So just some brief little results here. And, and I think it's more so what happened after we identified these pain points, we've built the platforms and what is the resolution here, right? So it's been pretty impressive with the amount of traffic that has came through the McCarty location in the past 12 months. And you can see the line item there, 15,000 drivers or visitors, uh, entries in the past 12 months. That's an immense amount of traffic, right? Yeah. And I think the, the main takeaways here that I had viewed, obviously, we always want to improve safety, right? We want to improve the capabilities to provide information, the information accessibility is obviously a huge hurdle in many different industries, whether it be safety information, visitor information, et cetera, all these different things. It's how do we get that information in the folks' hands who need it? And then right. how do we increase the processes to be as efficient as possible and then digitize as much as possible? So Jeff's desk doesn't have the stack of papers. It's this tall on it. Now it's only this tall, right? <laughs> but what are some other things that really have helped you in the whole process and, and kind of what the, 
the final pieces were. So all, all these things together ended up with us being able to communicate the stuff that we thought was important to a, a very focused audience and, and then being able to manipulate that on whatever schedule and whatever timing we needed, making it uh, one of the things that we thought was really good was not having a, a dedicated app that we would have to force people to download on their phones and 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 not have people have to get out of their their vehicles and come into a room and sit down and watch a video that we had to build a room for with tables and chairs and all those resources so perfect the the limitations that we had before or the the technology that we just didn't have available coming up with it in this method really just made stuff possible for us that we were struggling with before perfect yeah well I want to thank you, Jeff, for for joining me and working with me for the past 12 months or so on these projects. I've I've really enjoyed it and enjoyed yeah. identifying the problems and coming up with solutions and coming up with them creatively sometimes. And I want to give a quick second here uh, for anybody in the chat that has any questions, any specific suggestions for museums that have been asking vis visitors to sign in. Absolutely, uh, Deborah, that's a a pretty easy, it would be really just the one component of the mobile check-in process can easily be transitioned into just a, hey, sign in or just scan a QR code. And it, it really becomes a, a powerful tool for gathering data as well. So a lot of museums and even facilities like Jeff's, you know, who's coming in? What do I want to know about them? I want to know their name. I might want to know their phone number in case I need to reach out to them. I might want their email. I might want you know, why are they visiting my facility? All these little pieces of data become invaluable over time. And once you start collecting these and like Jeff, you've had 15,000 visitors. So you guys have compiled an enormous amount of data. <laughs> right? right. And one thing we didn't talk about was um, being able to spit out a report yeah. in the end. And Absolutely. I mean, it all goes down to a, a, a dashboard or to an Excel yeah. spreadsheet and, mm -hmm. um, we, we didn't push out messages, but what we learned that we could do was use all those phone numbers and those email addresses, of course, just to send out messages actively, like a warning, before you get here, make sure and do this. But yep. then all that data was just right there in the system for us. Yeah, and, and Deborah followed up with the question, uh, people who are reluct reluctant to provide names and things like that. So really that boils down to how, uh, you know, forceful you want to be in your data gathering. So you can make it required, you know, Hey, if you want to come in here and you can uh, adjust that setting, I believe with your uh, form specifically, Jeff, the phone number is required. Um, everything is a hard required to move on to the next step. So, and it can be soft too. So if you don't want to necessarily require, they have to put their phone number, you can make that piece optional or et cetera. You can really customize them to fit whatever your needs are best. And it's, it's a simple process. Yeah. We talked about maybe we'd say what company they worked for. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we, we talked about maybe their driver's license number or the, mm -hmm. the trip number or whatever. And they were just going to be some various data entry that we could have used. And we just settled on for us. It was important to know their name and their phone number and what company they worked for. Uh, we mm -hmm. learned that some people can't type phone numbers, right? So there's, we did have to set up a few criteria just to make sure yep. there weren't any letters in there and they actually were For sure. phone numbers. And but... there's, there's always going to be the element somewhat of human error, but overall, I mean, you know, we're talking 95% of what is entered is going to be valuable information, yeah. you know, so well, there's always outliers, but we do our best to get around them. Uh, is this program beneficial to small companies with few contractors coming in? So it can be scaled uh, to meet a lot of different sized organizations need uh, needs. We work with small non-for-profits on, you know, simple data management, and you can easily push information out to folks too. So when we're collecting phone numbers, those are going into a database and our texting platform can be utilized to push information as well. So if you do have a few contractors coming in, or maybe it's internal staff you need to co connect with, or, 
really whatever the needs are, we can kind of customize platforms like this to fit individual needs very easily. So, and it's, it's easily scalable. So we work with companies that have five employees, right? All the way up to companies like, uh, or uh, departments like Jeff works in where 15,000 people come in, you know, so very scalable and very easy to customize and, to fit needs. And, and also Max, there, there probably were a few products that y'all made that were kind of like, what we came up with here, but I think what we ended up with is just after some brainstorming, three unique products that had not been made before. So yeah. we took some ideas and then mm -hmm. I, I just kept asking, I want this. Can you do this? I needed to end up with this end result and we just morphed it to make it fit really exactly, exactly. what I needed. Exactly. Well, again, I appreciate everybody's time. I appreciate your time, Jeff, very, very much. Um, and we will make sure to definitely send this recorded uh, conversation out to those who attended. And uh, my contact information there is on this slide. And if you have any questions or want to follow up and see if uh, the shoe fits for your organization, more than happy to do so. But thanks again, Jeff. I appreciate your time very, very much, buddy. Enjoy California for the next day and safe travels back home to Houston, right? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Max. Right. Good talking with yep. you today.